Agora TV. The world is thinking. And here we're sitting in the midst of a financial crisis. Funding for research and education coming down. Funding for care in the absence of a self-correcting and warning system that constantly validates what we do. We're simply chopping. Chop, chop, chop. And the cost of medical education is going up, skewing what our students are going into. They are graduating with $250,000 in debt. Many of them just simply can't afford to do the things that their heart of hearts tells them they want to do, but they can't do it. Educationally, we talked about the lack of good training in genetics and therapeutics upon the, our colleagues. What about the public who are barely graduating from high school? We often have patients coming into our emergency room with their 23andMe or whatever genome scans, and the guys in the ERs are saying, what's this, and how does this apply to what I'm doing? That's a tiny fraction of the American public. The poor and the educationally disadvantaged don't have a clue what we're talking about. How do you establish partnerships with those who really are in need? Difficult. So where do we sit? today from my perspective. You know, best of times, worst of times, sure. The knowledge just around this table is knowledge that could not have existed 20 years ago. <coughs> we all dreamed about it, but we couldn't do it. And yet, the society in which we find ourselves is not functioning. And having been in medicine for 35 years, I would argue that healthcare advances is much more due to what we do as a society with what we've got than the technology that we have. Internationally, the single correlate of child health outcome is maternal literacy. It has nothing to do with what I do as a doctor. Educate women internationally and you improve the lot of children internationally. And I would argue if you increase the driving age to 21 and the voting age to eight, the world would be a lot better place. <laughs> <laughs> so as we talk about the gaps today, I want people to think about not the gaps in the science. There is so much brilliance, but in a small number of people. Unfortunately, we have a lot of those gathered around the table today who I hope really will create sparks and new science and new ideas. The gap isn't the science, and no matter how complex it gets, yeah, we'll need new information technology to deal with it. We'll need systems approaches. No physician is going to be able to deal with the kinds of information that we're generating right now. They are going to have to rely on systems that provide that information in ways that they can, in fact, use it in real time for, their, for the patients. But I would argue that, as always in humankind, the problem is us. It's not the science that we do. But if the problem is us, I remain an optimist from the south side of Chicago in the 1960s, if it's us, we can fix it. <laughs>